All right. After missing Friday feedback last week because I was gone, we have a lot to catch up on. Uh, let's get right into it. Remember that you can email into the show info at davidpackman.com if you so please. But sometimes we will feature a Facebook message or comment or a YouTube comment or a Reddit post or TikToks or whatever else it may be. Uh, we are going to start today with some criticism. It's not exactly the most substantive, but it does tell us a lot about uh, the mindset, I guess we would say, of some of the people who don't like me. Um, a woman wrote in. I'm not giving out her name just to protect her for whatever reason and says your messages are satanic. Children are being indoctrinated to be gay or transgender. Instead of letting them grow up and shown that God's word is the only true way. Interesting message, because number one, I still you know, I know lots of LGBT people. All of them, when they explain their sort of story of how they came to know themselves and know that they were trans or they were gay or whatever, it never, ever, 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 ever involves anybody planting the idea in their minds. It never involves indoctrination. It never involves any of that. And by the way, there are religious people who are gay or trans. Um, I have a gay friend who is Catholic, for example, quite religious, actually multiple. Now that I think three, I have three gay friends who are different uh, degrees of religious and Catholic. Um, I have um, a couple of lesbian friends who are quite orthodox in terms of Judaism, not like Hasidic, but they, they are relatively orthodox. Anyway, the idea that religiosity and LGBT um, identification are also two separate things. Uh, very much wrong. Very much wrong is, I think, uh, the place where I would leave it. Um, OK, couple other messages. Candor's spot posted on our YouTube channel. We need Christianity in the schools, in the government, in the media. And yes, back into the churches. Well, listen, I have no problem with Christianity in the churches. As long as no laws are being broken, churches are the right spot for Christianity. Christianity in the schools, if it's a private religious school, sure. Keep Christianity out of charter schools that are publicly funded and absolutely keep Christianity out of public schools. Christianity in government. No, we we have separation of church and state. We should have zero, zero religious involvement or influence on civil government. You can, of course, be privately religious and be an elected official. How would I ever? Do? It would be against the Constitution for me to say only atheists or agnostics in government. Of course not. But uh, the influence of that religion on government as a functioning civil government should be zero in the media. I mean, sure. Yeah, there's religious people and there's religious media uh, sort of like have at it. I'm not going to get uh, get too involved with that. Couple others, the the some a faction of the right continues to obsess over the book bans, acting like we are the bad guys. Seth Johnson says the fact that you want kids reading porn in school makes me think you should be investigated. Of course, I have never said that. I don't know anyone on the left who wants porn in school. What we want is the professionals, teachers, educators, librarians deciding what books should be in school libraries and subsequently deciding what books should be part of curricula for different aged students rather than parents who don't have any idea. OK, last one. Then we're going to get to some more substantive substantive stuff. I got this one on Facebook, which says you're a clown and a hack. Now it's the wrong you're and then says you're blind to what a constitutional republic is. It's again the wrong you're. But I'll give you the message in sum total. You're a clown and a hack. You're blind to what a constitutional republic is, a talking head and a cheap suit for a party that's gone woke and satanic. Are you blind, bias or just not smart? I'm not blind. I am biased in the sense that this is an opinion show and I give my opinion and I will leave smart uh, out to, for others to decide. But I do take issue with the fact that I am wearing a cheap suit. 
I am not wearing any suit on the show. You know, it reminded me of the old days of the David Pakman show. It's interesting how things change. You know, things change so slowly that you often don't notice it. But when you go back and look years ago at the show, I would sometimes wear a suit where it was sort of more in vogue and conferred some air of professionalism. And it's sort of like it's it's like Peter Jennings or Wolf Blitzer. You wear a suit as well to be taken seriously. Now, I actually think if I wore a suit on the show or a tie, it would actually hurt. Now, I think people would see it and go, why are you wearing that? It doesn't make any sense that it's, it's the wrong vibe. It doesn't go with the show. Anyway, uh, I'm not wearing any suits on the show, so you can't possibly say that it's a cheap suit. All right. Elizabeth Cerati wrote in and said, being from New Jersey, I'm not a big fan of Chris Christie, but if he became president, I wouldn't be afraid of what might happen to us and this country. Yeah, I agree with this. And, you know, one of the things I don't like, one of the areas of disagreement with my audience often is when I say, hey, you know what? Here's a Republican with whom I disagree on policy, but where essentially what Elizabeth is saying, I wouldn't be afraid for the country if they were president. And that's how I feel about Chris Christie. Might he put in place tax policy? I don't agree with. Sure. Yeah. Might he move health care in a direction that I think is uh, counterproductive or negative? Yeah, sure. But do I worry about the foundations of democracy and the destruction of our historical alliances with allies around the world if Chris Christie is president? No. And sometimes when I say that, people write in and they go, David, you're being too positive about Christie or you're looking at him through rose colored glasses or whatever. No, I think it's accurate to say it would be a policy disagreement the way I would have had with John McCain if the late John McCain would have been president. But it is not an existential threat to the United States. June Mulvaney wrote in about Trump's so-called 24 hour plan to stop the Ukraine Russia uh, war. And June says, if he knows how to stop the war, how come he is not telling the government how to do it now? That would be patriotic. Of course, June, uh, you know, sometimes the things that people like Trump say are so obviously absurd that we look at it and say, of course, Trump doesn't know how to stop the war in 24 hours other than by giving Russia everything it wants. But there is this subsequent layer. If Trump really is the great patriot, if Trump really is concerned about all of the Ukrainians that are dying, as am I, right? I share that concern, of course. If Trump really is concerned about that and you could stop it in 24 hours, why not tell Joe Biden how to do it right now? Why not say, I want to be a special envoy and I will negotiate an end to this? Because it would be the patriotic and the humanistic thing to do. People are dying and Trump could end it in 24 hours and he's going to wait until he's president to do it. Not particularly patriotic. Um, Anita McDougal writing in about Ron DeSantis, referring to him as the fascist and says the fascist needs to explain how he will destroy leftism. Yeah, he said uh, on a Fox interview a few weeks ago, if I become president, I will destroy leftism. Anita says, will he destroy the people who don't agree with him? Does he plan to reeducate them? What's the plan in detail? Have these techniques been tried before? How did that work out? Anita is completely correct. And by the way, if a left wing candidate said, I will destroy conservatism if I become president, uh, it would be 24 seven. This candidate would be a dictator on Fox News and on right wing media. When DeSantis says it, Fox is happy. They, they grin and they, they nod. Um, the point Anita is making is a really good one. In history, if you read history, 20th century history in particular, you will find that when there is rapid change to the political makeup of a country, it usually is coming at the barrel of a gun, at the end of a barrel of a gun uh, or through authoritarian dictators. The Chinese Cultural Revolution is a great example of when there was rapid change in a country, the likes of which DeSantis is talking about destroy leftism, even though the left wing view is winning out on almost every issue in the United States. Um, the Cultural Revolution was very, very ugly. And these folks who love to say we're going to do this, we're going to do that. It's going to be fast. We're going to get rid of leftism. They either don't know the history of how that change is achieved 
or they actually are the very authoritarians that we worry they might be. Very good point from Anita. Write in if you have anything to say, thoughts, questions, criticisms, requests of different kinds, whatever. It is all welcome, but try to be polite. Try to be polite. We have a fantastic bonus show for you today. Oh, the bonus show where you want to make money. Yeah. Everybody else that makes money to fund themselves is bad. We will be making money on the bonus show today. We will be making money on the bonus show on Monday, July 3rd. We will be off on the federal holiday Tuesday, July 4th, just as a heads up. We'll see you on the bonus show and then back here on Monday.